Hello again YouTubers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I've decided to do a review of a role-playing game product, because many gamers like different kinds of games. And I've got a lot of role-playing game products, and I thought I could do some reviews of them too, so I'm going to be starting a new playlist for role-playing games and role-playing game products. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Mouse Guard, the role-playing game box set for 2nd edition. <clears throat> now they just released second edition this year I never played uh, the first edition of Mouse Guard but I bought this box set for second edition at Gen Con this year and I've already gotten to play a game of it and uh, thoroughly read through all the rules and, and really check out everything that the box has to offer so for right now I'm going to do a review with you and show you what's in the box and then uh, later on I will be doing a separate review for the Mouse Guard role playing system the, again this one is just for the product of the starter box so let's open it up and I'll show you what it contains so firstly now they have these special dice. There's two bags of them, so you get quite a few. Plenty to use. Now, don't freak out. I know that a lot of people, when they see uh, a game that has special dice, are like, oh, I need to buy all new dice. No, you don't. If you just buy the book, which it's totally playable with just the book without the starter set, you just use normal six-sided dice for this game. It's just that for six-sided dice, a one, two, and a three is a miss, a four, five, and a six is a hit, and a six has other special things you can do with it. So because of that, a one, two, and a three has a snake biting its own tail, like the mythical Ouroboros. The four and the five, instead of a four and a five, have a pair of cross swords. Don't really know which way is up. And the six has the legendary black axe which if you read mouse guard you know what that is so now four five and six the swords and the axe are hits but on a six there are extra special things you can do you can spend points on a six to make sixes even better then in it after these two bags with lots of dice the next thing we have is lots of these cards now again these cards are not 100% necessary to play the game. You've got four decks of them, but they help. They're a nice aid. And if you buy the book, you can buy the cards separately, but if you buy the box set, it comes with four decks of these cards by itself, which is pretty nice. So let me uh, get one of these decks of cards open and I'll show you what the cards look like. This deck is being a little bit stubborn. Here we go. Now, inside each deck, there is actually kind of se several separate decks of cards. So, <clears throat> let me show you what we've got here. There we go, that's one, two, three, okay. So the first deck is your um, maneuver cards. You have Attack, which has a picture of Saxon from the comic books, from the Mouse Guard comics that this game is based on. Uh, attacking there with this sword. Uh, you have three attack cards. There are three of each variety. Here is a maneuver card. Uh, that is Sadie. Uh, she's got her sling there and she's doing a maneuver. There's three of those. Then it has three faint cards. There is a picture of um, Kenzie doing a faint. And then we have defend cards. I apologize, I don't remember the name of this character with the big shield. If, if anybody remembers, if anyone is, uh, who watches this has read the comics and remembers the name of, of the character with the big shield, please write it down below for me in the comments section. Now the next deck that we have uh, in here is equipment. Uh, the equipment cards, uh, it's weapon equipment that is. You can, again, this is not really necessary, you could write it down, but these are quick reference cards that remind you what the special abilities are of swords, axes, bows, knives, halberds, a hook and line, one of my personal favorites, I, I like that, <clears throat> a mace, shield, Sling, spear, 
staff and then light and heavy armor now again you can just jot this down on your character sheet but having the deck is kind of cool to be able to just put those cards out in front of you and rather than jot it down you've got the cards and uh, while it's not necessary I like it I like the cards they're pretty cool in another similar way <clears throat> we have some status cards now this deck of status cards uh, contains quick references of what each status means for you so they include sick injured tired angry and hungry slash thirsty now in all of these cases they tell you what they give you a negative one to exactly what you need to do to recover and uh, the order in which you t you test to recover so they're nice it's just nice quick references um, then in addition to those four decks of cards which all contain those the next thing in the box is the mouse guard role-playing game book of course the most important part of the box I mean here we have it is 313 pages before the appendix 313 pages of background on the world rules really well fleshed out beautiful full color book with these lovely pictures of members of the mouse guard in there um, maps you know all sorts of great things I love that they, they took some of the great illustrations straight out of the comic books which if you're a fan of the mouse guard uh, comics this might be something you'd want to own even if you weren't planning to play the game um, really really nicely done book every page has this this lovely uh, border on the side so let me show you what that looks like I mean in addition to to the well thought out and well written out rules which it does have this is just a very beautifully put together book and that border I should mention it changes from section to section so as you see this is a different border than that I showed you in that other section there as is this there we go so you can see it the next thing is a tiny little book bit of a, a mouse guard expansion if you will it's called mouse guard the role-playing game new rules new missions now this one contains some extra special rules um, for mounted combat as well as um, charming animals so that you can ride them taming them uh, raising them uh, plus uh, uh, quite a few new missions there are multiple missions in the main book and there are multiple missions in here enough to if you were just to do these missions with slight alterations to fit your gaming group because all of them also come with pre-constructed characters pre-generated characters specifically for those missions but you could order the missions and, and, and alter them slightly to fit for your gaming group which I've already done actually and there's enough missions between those two books to keep you busy for a while before you even have to make any of your own so that's pretty nice I do like that they give you lots of content in that regard now the next thing I want to show you from the box is this oh yeah it's a map of the mouse guard world as of the year 1150 it thoroughly details out where all the settlements are I like to just put this out on the table in the middle of the table because this is not a role-playing game that uses miniatures at all it's one that's a bit more ephemeral where you you just discuss it and you talk about where you are and where you're going but this gives everybody a, a good idea because let's say you're traveling from Lockhaven the home of the mouse guard and you're going on a mission to Rootwalla well how far does it how far is it how far is it from Lockhaven to root wallow and there you can see it's quite a distance so you know it's going to take you a while to get over there in addition it thoroughly details out uh, the border with the dark heather so you know where the weasels are the dangerous dangerous weasels and you can even see the communities that fell to the weasels during during the weasel war so they're scratched off but their names are still there uh, because of course the weasels even though they lost they did destroy multiple mouse set settlements then <clears throat> we have something that no uh, basic starting role-playing box would be complete without in my opinion 
a Game Master screen. Now I like this Game Master screen. It has a uh, the wonderful artwork uh, from the first Legends of the Guard graphic novel. This was on the cover of that. Really nice piece of artwork. And one of the things I really like about this is in addition to having enormous amounts of material on the Game Master side for them to look up quick reference, it's got, in addition to the artwork, it's got one page of some quick reference stuff that your players might need. So they can peek over and say, oh, oh, wait a minute, okay, okay, this, this, that's what, uh, for different kinds of, of contests, this is this is the particular card I would need to do to do this or do that. So, really nice, lots of quick reference stuff out there, very helpful, very useful, and I always use a Game Master screen, no matter what role-playing game I do. I, do. It, I always love to have quick references right in front of me, because um, nobody wants to be sitting there paging through the book looking for the right part. To have the quick references in front of you is always very useful. Now, the final pair of things that come in the box are a bit interesting and a bit different. This is not something I see in that many other um, RPG products anymore, but this is great. I really like this. There are two pads, okay? One is character sheets. A pad of two-sided character sheets here. These are great. I mean, yeah, you can print them out from online, but these are a real nice, thick paper stock, with double-sided, lots of cheat sheet references, um, even has a place on there for you to draw your mouse and, and draw the equipment on them to, to show what they look like. The other one is a quick reference for the Game Master. Now this one has an area for you to write down the names of all your, your, your players, their names of their characters, the character's parents, the senior artisan that trained them, their, their main belief, their goal, their instinct, their hometown, the name of their mentor that trained them once they got became members of the Mouse Guard, um, their specialty, their best friends, their enemy, all on a tiny little sheet. And this sheet can accommodate up to five players. Five, I can fit five players on one of these sheets. Great great little thing to include in the box. So let me show you, uh, from the ones we used, I've got a couple of them uh, uh, of, of the character sheets and, and this quick reference to show you how it looks all filled out. So here was the quick reference in the game I used. We, we had three players and I was game mastering. So here was my quick reference sheet. As you can see, I have it filled out for three players. So the first player uh, was playing a character named Eowyn. And their home was Spruce Tuck. Their mentor was Otto. You know, it, 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 it's just, I have a quick reference for all of that. So now I know if my characters decide to go to the town of Spruce Tuck, oh, they're from Spruce Tuck. They should probably run into an NPC that knows them. And what NPC could that be? Oh, well, I have their parents listed here and their best friend. Their best friend is Sarah. So maybe they'll run into Sarah over in Spruce Tuck. Uh, on the back of this, it, it also has... Again, more quick references because, I mean, they, they, they give you so many great amounts of quick references for minor rules that may not come up that often. There's references in here for things about, you know, weather and doing a prologue and um, rewards that you can give to players. And these are things that aren't going to come up all the time, but it's nice to have it there. When they do come up, you just flip it over and go, oh, right, right. Here's the rewards. Got it. Lots of quick references, I like that. So let me show you some character sheets. Uh, let me find one, here's a good one, because uh, this player actually did use the drawing option, so I wanna show you that. They drew, the player drew their armor on their mouse there, on one of the two mice. I love that they include that. They include a little drawing of your mouse guard in two positions and you put their equipment and their armor on them and make them look like what you think they should look like and that's that's great that's a really cool thing i think i think more character sheets should include that so on this side here we have the basic stats and skills uh the statistics in this are known as abilities abilities and skills and then on the other side 
we have all their personal information along with their belief, goal, instinct, equipment, things that on other than the equipment cards in this case, of course. But if you don't have the equipment cards and you just print this out from online, of course, you would put your weapons there too and maybe a quick reference of what it is that those weapons do. Uh, they also have a section for, for contacts and then they have a section over here where uh, this is for combat, for starting disposition of the group, if you would be the player that is nominated to to uh, to help organize, not really control, but organize the combat for everybody. Usually there's a, for any kind of conflict, there's usually a, a, a captain chosen and um, whoever's best at that. So if, it, if it's a social conflict, it'd be someone who has better social skills. If it's a combat conflict, it'd be someone who is better at combat. And then um, there's also on the character sheet there, if you don't have the cards, the maneuver cards for attack, maneuver, defend, um, feint, there's an area there where you can jot down what you're doing. So that, so again, those, those extra bits which come in the box set, or if you buy the book could come separately, are not necessary. They're, so don't freak out, don't be like, oh my god, I have to, I, if I'm, if I'm going to play this, I would have to get the box set. You don't. If you just want to get the book, that's fine. But we are talking about the box set here, so let's discuss. Now, you could buy all these parts separately, and it would cost you more than it would to get it in the box set. The box set is a little pricey, uh, but it's, I mean, it's, it's $69.99 US or $52.99 British pounds. It is a little pricey, but you, it's very heavy. There's a lot you get in here. And let's, let's run them down one by one. So you got the rule book. Now, if you want to play the game, you have to have the rule book. But this is a nice paperback copy of the rule book, which is how they were able to get the cost down. Because the normal copy you would get separately would be a big hardcover. And it's a bit more expensive. But this is a high quality paperback. I mean, often when we buy role playing game books, uh, Lynn and I prefer the hardcovers because they're usually higher quality. And I've had some issues with some paperbacks where they don't hold together very well. But this is not one of those cheesy, chintzy, um, put together paperbacks where you have, um, where it's just held together by, by a bit of glue and a prayer. I mean, this actually has um, a thread sewn through binding. You can see the threads in, in, certain, in between certain pages. So this is a properly put together book. Now, I haven't owned it for that long, but I do feel like this, this book's going to hold up. This is a really well put together book. Uh, so for a paperback, I, I quite like it. So the next thing I want to talk about is the dice. Now, the dice are completely unnecessary. As unnecessary as they are, I like them. This game, not going too deeply into the system, is a bit of a more advanced system. Even though it only uses one size of die, and, and, and what I told you about, it, you know, these dies being like a 50-50 split of, of whether they're, they're a success or a failure sounds very simple, but overall there's a lot of, even though they're simple rules, a lot of different rules to keep track of, and um, not doesn't always feel like it's, it's, it's very aimed for beginning role players. Now, you could play this with beginning role players, and I actually did play it with a couple beginning role players in the group we tried out the rules with, and it worked out okay by the end of the, of the game they were getting it. But that being said, I think these dice helped because they simplified it a bit. If they also had to keep track of, okay, one, two, three is a failure, four and five is a success, and six is a success, where I can do these other extra things if I want to, having this die and just knowing a snake is bad, swords and axes are good, and axes can be extra special good if I want them to be made it easier for the beginning player. So I will say that even though these are completely unnecessary, they're, they're nice, they're nice dice, and I like them. I would, you know what, if I had just bought the book and not bought the box set, I probably would have gotten these dice myself anyway, even though they're unnecessary. I like them. But then again, I collect dice, and so do a lot of gamers. So if you do, you know what I mean. Now the cards. While the cards are unnecessary, these, I think, are more closer to being necessary than the dice. These are really great. The quick references of just being able to throw down and say, my character is hungry. Boom, I have the card there. I know that hungry means he gets negative one 
in um, any disposition in in any conflict. Negative one to the disposition of any conflict, and then it tells me how to recover from it, and then its recovery order is number one. And the, just having that all on a quick reference card is great. Having the cards for the equipment and just throwing them out and being like, my character has heavy armor, boom. My character has a sword, boom. And just having that in front of me and knowing that a sword is useful and adds one die to any action type, choose the action type during the conflict. So you can pick any type of action, an attack, a feint, a, and, and you can get it to add one die for it. Swords are actually quite useful in that regard. It's great. I like having those cards out for quick reference. In addition, the the attack, defend, a feint, and maneuver cards, these are fantastic too. Because while you could just jot it down on a piece of scrap paper, and that's totally fine, it's so much cooler for, you, for the players to discuss while the, the, the game master decides what the enemy is going to do with these cards. They say, okay, well, we got three rounds of conflict. The enemy's going to first, he's going to feint, and then he's going to... Then he's going to defend, and then he's going to then he's going to attack, and then then the game master takes those three cards that they chose, and they put them face down without telling anyone what they are, and they say, "Okay, let me know when you're ready." And then the players discuss because each each mouse guard gets to do one action uh, per round, up to three actions total, without going too deep into the system. And they decide they say, "Okay, you're going to attack first, and then you're going to defend, and then I am going to faint." And they, they work that out, and they say, okay, we're ready to go. And then you flip the cards at once. And while you could reveal it on a piece of scrap paper, that both of you flipping a card just feels more epic. It feels cooler. And, and, it's, and, it's, uh, and these cards are beautiful artwork on them. They're really great. I like them a lot. Again, if I had just bought the hardcover book, at some point I would have had to get these cards. But since I, I got the starter set, they're there for me. Now the next thing is that I want to talk about is this little expansion. So now here's the thing. After reading the main book, I had questions. There were a few things. I'm like, okay, well, it, it references that, that you can ride mounts, but what does that do for you? And it references that, that you can um, possibly tame creatures, but does it really give you information on how? And then that's in here. There's a lot of extra resources in here. Um, this feels like it's, it's, it's a smaller book. This one is only about... Um, 48 pages. And what this feels like to me is, uh, and now I, I believe this is available separately as an expansion also, but what this feels like to me is there was a handful of things they couldn't fit in the main book, and they put it in another book and they said, you know what, it doesn't take up enough space for a whole other book, so let's make some more missions and throw some more extra cool stuff into, and it's great. And I, I, I like this book, I think this is this is uh, a great extra resource. You can start with just the regular Mouse Guard book, and later as your characters get more skilled and advanced, this is a great book uh, to use more adventures for more experienced characters, plus more rules, cool things. Uh, I particularly love the rules for raising and taming animals to use them as mounts. And here you can see a picture of one of the Mouse Guard riding on the back of a hare with a spear. And that is awesome. That's a great pick. Now, I've already said I love the map. I love the game master screen. The map is the map is not necessary, but it's nice. It's a nice resource to have. Uh, it, it's great to put it out in the middle of the table and helps everybody to 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 visualize the countryside and where everything is. Uh, and the game master screen, I really do feel, is necessary. Now, these sheets. So this is available to print out online. These are probably of all the things in the box the least necessary things to have. I mean, for the quick reference sheet for my players, I could write that up myself. I could jot it down myself. For the for the cheat sheet on the back, I could write down all those rules myself. For, for this, I could print it out from online. Yet, I love that they included these. These are great. These, these tear-off pads of character sheets and, and uh, Game Master reference sheets, these are fantastic. They may not be necessary, but they're fun. I like them. They're very useful. So overall, I would say that this, this is a box that contains everything you need to play and lots of things that are fun to have while you play, things that aid you in it. If you are interested in getting into Mouse Guard, if you want to check it out, um, I would say that the Mouse Guard starter set is a great 
entry product to get you into the system because it really does have everything you'll need. In fact, if you buy this, you'll probably never need to buy another Mouse Guard the Role Playing Game product ever because this basically has everything they have for the game out to this point, all in one nice, tidy package. And to be honest, it's so complete, I mean, co uh, including uh, wonderful sections in the rulebook full of, of NPCs and villains and um, monsters for the mouse guard, which are, which are animals like owls and foxes and, and ferrets and weasels. And it's so complete with what's in here. I don't think they'll ever need to release anything else unless they just maybe want to release some more adventures in a book format. But that sort of product is very optional anyway. The, the way this is, everything that comes in the box set, I would say it's the perfect amount of stuff to get you and a group of friends playing the Mouse Guard role-playing game. So for my review of the Mouse Guard the role-playing game box set, second edition, I would say that this product, in my opinion, gets 9 out of 10 stars. Because this is a fantastic product. If you want to play this game, this is a great place to start. If you want to get into this game, I highly recommend shelling out the, the bit of more money for this box set instead of just getting the book. Because even though it's more expensive than the book, it's worth it. Everything that's in here is you really are getting your money's worth. So there you have it. Let's get a second opinion, though. Lynn, how many stars out of ten would you give to the starter box set for Mouse Guard the Role Playing Game Second Edition? Seven. So Lynn gave it a seven. So she's not as super ecstatic about it as I am, but seven is still a very positive review. So this is a two thumbs up review for the starter set. If you want to get into Mouse Guard, check it out. Great stuff. So in, now, if you would like to comment on anything, have you played the game? Do you want to comment on on uh, if you like the box set, if you think it's as necessary as I do, or if you don't think it's as necessary, as necessary as I do, please comment down below. Any questions you'd like to ask, comment down below. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, Game on.